find out what's making you sick and how to heal. Anthony William is the medical medium. Hello, I'm Anthony William, and you're listening to the Medical Medium Radio Show, where each week I talk about the most advanced healing information and secrets about health, much of which is not found anywhere else and is decades ahead of what's out there now. And in this episode today, you're really going to see that when it's coming down to thyroid, because that's what we're talking about today. Today's a really exciting show. Seriously, this is um, another thyroid show. We did one a long time ago, but we need it to refresh because I need it to make sure I dedicate as much time as I can in an episode to really deliver all of the information. So that's what we're doing today. And if I, as I've always said 10, 20, 30 years, people are waiting for answers out there. They're waiting. They're waiting one year for answers, two years for answers. They're just, they are waiting out there. You guys know, have any of you waited for real answers? And, you know, it just, it takes time and we're delivering them. And that's what we're doing here on this show. It's so important to know that. And when I say, hey, you heard this here, this is where you heard it. You're going to hear this information here. When I say that, I'm saying that so it's important to know, you know, when it comes down to your healing process, you want the right information. You want to know what's going on so that you're not accidentally somewhere else hearing something else like that broccoli is bad for your thyroid, which is not true, or that kale is bad for your thyroid, which is not true. And you can get lost in that and not heal. So when I say, hey, you heard that here at the Medical Medium Show, this is where it started, or this piece of information started here it, you just know I'm doing that so you get the right information so that you don't get strayed or, lo- you know, you don't stray and get lost somewhere. Because I'm going to tell you guys something. You know, if you Google or if you got up on the Internet and you look for, you know, what's the tallest bridge? You know, what's the tallest bridge out there? What's the, um, what's the deepest ocean out there? You're going to get an answer, and it's going to be a real answer. It's going to be real. Okay, it's going to be accurate. Most likely it will be accurate. You know, um, you can type in anything, be like, what's the tallest mountain? And it'll be accurate. What causes Hashimoto's thyroiditis? And the only information that's really out there now on the scene just coming is because I released the information that Epstein-Barr is the cause of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Okay, so what I'm saying is this is where it's out here for your healing and for your loved one's healing because the information is not out there. You also hop on the internet, you do a search on um, you do a search on what's good, what's bad for your thyroid, and they'll tell you broccoli, cruciferous is bad for, you know, the family, cruciferous uh, is bad, the cruciferous family is bad for your thyroid, the kale, the broccoli, the cauliflower, misinformation. And so I just want you to know that it's here for a reason. Spirit offers this information. We're going to get you moving forward. This is serious stuff, and we're really going to go into it. So let's talk about it, and let's get get started with the healing now. Today's show is about mysteries of thyroid. Fasten your seatbelts. Get the seatbelts ready, okay? <laughs> do, you have, do you have something to drink? Are you drinking any, you know, any green juice or a cup of tea or some water or some coconut water? Are you drinking anything? You know, relax and then have a little something maybe to eat. Maybe you have a a date in your hand. Maybe you have, you know, a gluten-free cracker if that's something you like, whatever. So I'm totally there with you. So the whole point is today is about the thyroid. Millions of people deal with mysterious weight gain, hair loss, fatigue, brain fog, hot flashes. Are you guys dealing with any of that? Are you dealing with any of that? Dry skin, restless leg syndrome. Oh, restless leg syndrome. You know, when people tell me about that, I just feel bad for them because, you know, that's rough. But what, I, what I'm happy about for them is we know how to fix restless leg syndrome. So, um, so there is a happiness about it, okay? Restless leg syndrome, dizziness, anxiety, insomnia, impaired memory, depression, menopause symptoms, And it keeps on going and going and going. All those symptoms are blamed on a thyroid condition. And and that, you know, you may have a thyroid condition. So I'm going to reveal the truth about thyroid disorders in this episode. So we're totally on it. This this is what's happening here. Um, I'm going to be in Los Angeles uh, November 5th for the event. We're going to do the light blast. And 
spirit sends light down in everybody's head on the crown of everybody's head and it runs through their body it un- it unblocks stagnant energy helps lift organs in a better place like if you have a stagnant liver it helps move people forward ignites the healing process um helps detoxify their bloodstream helps change you know the state of the state of what people you know are in if they're really highly stressed out all these things and more, and and it's been doing that since I've been a, the in young age of four and after. When I asked Spirit later on, when I started getting a little bit older, I asked Spirit, "Can we do something else?" Because I, I'm seeing everybody in this in suffering. I see they have all these illnesses. So when I was a child, I was telling Spirit, "What else can we do?" It was really overwhelming. And Spirit said, "Well, we can do the light." So. Um, I did the light in different various times when I was younger for people and growing up and so forth and did the light wherever I could. Now I'm, I'm saving everything I got, my reserves, you name it, to have Spirit and I do the light at the events and make sure we ignite people's healing process. It helps conditions recover. It helps people recover in many ways and shapes and forms. We've had miraculous, miraculous stories of the last couple of events with the light blast and just, you know, hundreds of, of testimonials. So, um, you know, look into that medicalmedium.com. And then of course, life changing foods is coming soon. It is coming. I am beyond excited. I said this before. I am so excited about it because when you guys open this up, when you open this book up, it's not the same. It's not the same as books out there right now. It's not a throwaway recipe book. It's not anything like this. This is serious, and it has hundreds, over 700 conditions and symptoms listed in here and what food specifically helps if it's eaten properly and it's brought into the diet the book is spirit's masterpiece i'm not saying mine i'm saying spirit's masterpiece not my masterpiece it's spirit i can't take the credit whatsoever but it's information head of the time head of science head of medical research about what food can do for us um, and also, uh, there's an infertility, fertility chapter in there, and there's an angel chapter of spirits, of spirit, you know, giving me information about angels. It's never been released ever in any angel community anywhere. And I'm just so, I can't wait for you to see this. And it's also about how to protect your family, how to protect your loved ones, what is causing problems right now, the unforgiving four spirit calls it. These are four things you have to look out for in your life that cause harm in your health and your loved one's health. And I list them in there. First time ever in history. It's listed in a book like this. So I'm just excited. I'm sorry about the the passion. I'm sorry about the excitement. Make sure you lock a copy down whenever you can. I don't even think they're going to be in stock when they come out. So you might want to put your name on a pre-order. Um, I know, you know, I know I'm making my family and whoever else and friends do that because I want to make sure they don't have to wait for it. Um, anyway, so let's move on to thyroid. Thank you for your patience of even, you know, dealing with the fact that I'm excited like this because I know you guys want the information and, and sometimes I just get too happy about, um, about all these different things. So, okay, right on to thyroid. Let's do it. Let's go into it now. Um, here's the deal with thyroid. Here's the deal. The most important thing to understand is the great mistake. The great mistake, okay? This is the great mistake, and, and I'm going to sound like sound funny with this one again, but it's the great mistake that Spirit and I brought to the attention of the medical world communities and everyone else right now. This mistake you're only going to hear over here, and I've I've you know uncovered this mistake so you can heal, and thankfully from Spirit. And the mistake is autoimmune. It's the great mistake is autoimmune understanding autoimmune now we're told our body attacks itself and i talked about this in other shows but you got to hear it when it comes down to hashimoto's thyroiditis when it comes down to thyroid conditions and we're told our body attacks itself so if we have hash if we were diagnosed with hashimoto's thyroiditis and keep in mind hashimoto's is just the name of some guy a long time ago that actually woke up one morning went to work Okay, as a doctor, went to work, a patient came in, and he felt their thyroid, and he said, by golly, I think your thyroid's inflamed. And that's all we know today, all these years. 
all these decades, it's all we know about Hashimoto's thyroiditis until the release of the medical medium book. Okay, till the release of the medical medium book, where thank God have been able to, um, and thank Spirit, of course, been able to get the information out there. So what happened was a doctor woke up and one morning went to work and said, well, my patient's thyroid's inflamed. So thyroiditis was the name for inflammation. Hashimoto's was the name of the doctor. And that's it. And so we live by this rule where we go to the doctor. I see people all the time. They go to the doctor, and they get their first diagnosis, and they walk out of the doctor's office baffled. First of all, they're accepting the fact that they're accepting the fact that the medical research and medical science thinks they know what they're doing or talking about. It's not the doctor's fault. It's about research and science. And they accept it like, okay, what does this mean? And they walk out confused, baffled, totally just don't understand what's going on, and rightfully so, rightly so. I would in a second if I was just someone who didn't know much about medical stuff, but I know everybody's an expert in their own fields, and they know information about other things, but they may not know a lot about the medical field. They walk in, they get a diagnosis, um, and they walk out, and they just got told that their body's attacking itself, that their body is destroying their thyroid. Okay, first of all, that's not accurate. And for the first time in history, we're changing that. We're bringing that information. And that's why you guys got to stay, you know, you got to stay holding on to, the, to these, these shows because I need you to have this information because you're spreading the word. I hear it happening now, the word spreading. I mean, this is a blessing because we're helping people. And I'm helping you. You're helping others. And, and that's, that's like my prayers have been answered. And they've been answered with that. Because when you're a young woman and you get told you got Hashimoto's thyroiditis and your body's attacking itself, you instantly plant a seed. A seed is planted, a poisonous, poisonous um, um, seed, venomous seed is planted in the body, in the brain, that your body has betrayed you. It is cutting your legs from out from under you, basically. It's backstabbing you. It's breaking trust. And you go home, you tell your husband, you tell your fiance, you tell your boyfriend, or you just go home and tell your best friend, your soulmate, that my body's turned against me. Because that's what happens. I'm watching it every day. And finally, I said, you know what? Something has to be done about this. Something has to be done. First of all, there's an auto and antibody, an auto antibody that's discovered by research and science through blood work. That auto antibody is not attacking the thyroid gland like medical research thinks instead it's produced by your immune system to attack the virus called Epstein-Barr that's attacking your thyroid the inflammation in your thyroid is caused by Epstein-Barr creating the inflammation the virus Epstein-Barr is creating inflammation in the thyroid gland as it burrows itself in, your body has no responsibility in attacking itself and is not by any means, never would, never was, and it doesn't in any autoimmune disease or diagnosis that's out there now. Please take in that information. Please. Because it is life-saving. Life-saving, I repeat. Okay? Because it's the truth and it's life-saving. And so those autoantibodies, they're going in, they're going in to get the Epstein bar. They're not causing inflammation. The inflammation already occurred, it's already happening, and it continues to happen with Epstein bar doing its thing. And this is how it's done. This is what's happening. Okay, it all starts out with mononucleosis. Now, you don't even have to remember having mono because not everybody gets diagnosed with mono when they're sick. In fact, not a lot of people really do. It's just those more bad cases of mononucleosis where you're just so sick that you go to the doctor's office and you get your first mononucleosis diagnosis. Um, relatively, most people have a sore throat for a week and never even go to a doctor. The sore throat goes away and they had a mild case of mono and it goes away and that's it. It goes away, get, leaves the bloodstream, it hides itself in the liver and sits in there for a long time until stress deficiencies, immune system uh, weaknesses, um, anything, losses that we go through, uh, anything happens emotionally, um, you know, meaning stress, meaning things that break us down, all of that. And then with that, 
you know, bad food that we eat and everything else around bad foods. And then it comes out. It comes out and heads to the thyroid causing hypothyroidism. That's what Epstein-Barr does. So this is stage three of Epstein-Barr. It heads to the thyroid. And it's not going to be diagnosable as Epstein-Barr because that's only when it's in its mononucleosis phase. All this information you can only hear here. You can hear it. You can just read it in the medical medium book and in the future books I'm putting out. But this is how it works. Now, science and research is going to get there down the road. Um, and they are going to find out and figure it out, and they are going to work on it, and, and maybe this will be remedied, some of this stuff. But we're not there yet, and it may take another 20 years. So we got to do something about our health and our children's health and our family's health and all our loved ones, and we have to do something. And we have to fight for this a little bit. We have to fight what's for what's right, and we got to get ourselves better, and we got to protect ourselves. Because here's the deal. Medical research, medical science doesn't have answers for something. You have to take the blame then. You have to take the blame. I'm just telling you how the system works, okay? There's a lot of issues in the medical system that we know about that are evident that there's other people talking about. This one here, no one's talking about, and it's the most important. It's the most important out of them all. It's the greatest mistake of all time in medical history. It's, it's a greater mistake than even when they, you know, when they were bloodletting, <laughs> even when they were bloodletting, even when they, you know, when poor George Washington, first president of the United States, was bloodletted to death over a sore throat. Okay, I mean, that was a, a horrific mistake, without a doubt. But this mistake here is affecting millions of people, millions of people. So what happens is Epstein-Barr enters into the thyroid slowly over time, and in some people it happens faster depending on their immune system deficiencies and how much heavy metals they have in the body and what kind of foods they're eating and what kind of stress they're under. It burrows into the thyroid, causing hypothyroidism. Okay, so that's what it does. And it can do a few other things in some people's body, bodies, um, the, the immune system, okay, tries to take calcium and protect you and wall off the virus, and you might get a nodule. And that's from calcium. Being, make, make these little calcium prisons being built around the Epstein bar to stop it. And that doesn't hurt us at all. And it's there to stop the Epstein bar. When your Epstein bar gets better and your thyroid's getting better and you do things to do to take care of yourself, like I've seen hundreds do, and get rid of their Hashimoto's and their and their hypothyroidism and their nodules, those nodules go down and clear up. And um, sometimes they leave, leave a little bit of a little scar tissue behind or something like that, but they can clear up. There's no question. Now, since research and science doesn't know what's wrong with you, the best way, the best out is to say you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis and your body's attacking itself. That's the best out because you have, they have to put the blame on you, not the doctor. The doctor's not putting blame on you. Doctors are, you know, all doctors are good, good people. They go into the industry to help people. I know some amazing doctors. In fact, without them, we wouldn't even have Epstein-Barr on the radar, Epstein Barr was named after two doctors that discovered it. Now, if they didn't discover it, Spirit would have just, you know, would call it a different name of a virus, is what Spirit would have done if it was discovered, just like some of the viruses that Spirit does see now that we don't have names or tags for. That when we do scans, Spirit and I do a scan, we see different viruses in people that have no names. They're not even discovered by research and science. But Epstein Barr was, and by two brilliant physicians, they were underfunded. So the whole point is, is that it was discovered, and that virus is responsible for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And the best way to get kind of past all that for the industries is to blame it on you. It's autoimmune. Your body's destroying itself. So this is just so important for you to know. It really is. Now, let's talk about some things. Let's talk about symptoms. Mysterious weight gain, hair loss, fatigue, brain fog, hot flashes, dry skin, restless leg syndrome, insomnia, impaired memory, depression, menopause symptoms, anxiety, dizziness. Those are Epstein-Barr symptoms, not thyroid problem symptoms. They get classified as thyroid condition symptoms by practitioners that have no clue, and it's perfectly normal, rightfully so, that Epstein-Barr is causing those symptoms. So that's another mistake we have on the block. The only real symptoms you can get from a thyroid problem are just very mild fatigue at best and temperature fluctuations. Temperature fluctuations. 
that's at best with a thyroid symptom. The symptoms people experience that are being blamed on thyroid right now by the best functional doctors and everything else, those are Epstein-Barr. The fatigue is Epstein-Barr. The heavy fatigue, the brain fog is Epstein-Barr. The hot flash is Epstein-Barr. Heart palpitations, Epstein-Barr. And, I, and I, in different shows, I've explained what these symptoms and how it goes. Um, tinnitus, ringing in the ears, Epstein-Barr in the labyrinth of the inner ear, restless leg syndrome, Epstein-Barr uh, affecting the central nervous system, insomnia in the central nervous system once again being affected by Epstein-Barr, impaired memory, neurotoxins once again affecting um, neurotransmitters, depression, neurotoxins from Epstein-Barr once again creating depression uh, affecting neurotransmitters, um, menopause symptoms like heart palpitations and, and hot flashes and weight gain, all Epstein-Barr, Epstein-Barr sitting inside the liver, Epstein-Barr causing trouble. These are all stage three and stage four Epstein-Barr symptoms. You guys might want to listen to this show again. You've got to go to the archives and hear this one again because I'm going a little faster on you so you might not even be able to take notes because I want to make sure we get what we got to get in this show. <laughs> so just bear with me. You got your seatbelts on? Let's go. Let's go. Um, <laughs> we're putting the pedal to the metal here. All right. These symptoms are all Epstein-Barr related symptoms blamed on the thyroid. Yes, there's thyroid problems, and we see it in thyroid testing, even though thyroid testing is antiquated. It's antique. It's antiquity. There's no doubt. Someone told me, you know where I got the antique thing? Someone told me like a while back, they said, I'm totally anti into antiquities. That's what they said to me, right? And, you know, and, and I think that's really cool because things from the past is really cool. So I was like, hey, that sounds great. You know, I'm, I like all that. And you're like, you know, um, do you know anything about antiques? That's what this person said to me. And, and I said, I, you know, I mean, I, spirit knows all my information in life comes from spirit. So it all, all all comes from spirit. There's really nothing I've kind of been able to learn on my own. I've just had to learn everything from spirit in my own life. And I go, well, I do know something about antiques from what spirit has taught me about all kinds of different things, but I'm not a, you know, expert. And, uh, and person said, well, do you, you know, what do you know that's about antique? And I said, well, how about, whoa, and it hit me. How about the uh, outdated information that gets put out fresh every day? How about the, the information on Hashimoto's thyroiditis that said the top thyroid books literally is, is ancient history if, if they don't realize the body doesn't attack itself and Epstein-Barr is causing the thyroid. And, you know, literally ancient history. Anything coming out brand new about autoimmune, ancient history, that's an antique already coming off fresh off the press. Okay, I just forewarning you guys is what I'm doing, by the way, so you don't do you, so you don't get fooled that your body's attacking itself. The last thing I ever want you to do is think that because it's disastrous. So those are the antiques that I'm seeing, and it, that's why I talk about that a little bit more because it really it really triggered that into that area. So let's talk about how the thyroid works a little bit. The thyroid produces some hormones. It produces, you know, thyroxin, and, and, and that's what it does. It produces hormones. It gets signaled by T, TSH from the pituitary. Um, pretty straightforward. Research and science actually has that down, and that's what's great about research and science because they do have pieces to the puzzle, thank God. And when it comes to, you know, heart surgery and it comes to those kinds of things, and when you break a leg, there are, I mean, you need them. Car accidents, you need them. When it comes to chronic illness, they fall short. It's simple as that. It's, that's, 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 that's where we're at right now in, in human history with, with science and research and medical, in the medical world. So, okay, so, you know, we know how that works with the thyroid, that part. Okay, so that does work like that. But testing for thyroids is still outdated and antiquated. When you go to the doctor's office and you get some blood drawn and, you know, your numbers are there, they show your numbers um, and, you know, thyroid profile, and the doctor says, well, you have this or that, or you have no problem. It's really not easy to, to know because the minute you go to the doctor's office, your adrenaline is running a little bit. Even if the doctor's office is the most favorite place on in your life to go. Like, you know, say it's even like meditation. Some people say, I just love my doctor visits because I love my doctor. And, um, so even if you're in that state, but the minute you get a blood test, the minute the needle goes into your arm, okay, 
the minute it goes in, adrenaline fires off. The adrenals pump. They pump ferociously. Even if, even if it's for 10 minutes or 5 minutes, they pump ferociously. And that adrenaline confuses and cancels out TSH readings, thyroxin readings, unit T3, T4, you name it. All the testing that we have today gets bonkered, totally bonkered from that alone, disturbed from that alone. Now, you would have to get a blood test once a day for 30 days, and then the average number be taken from all 30 days to give you an idea of a closer number, number one. And even that's not going to secure us because your adrenaline ran all 30 days when you got the blood test. You see how it works? And, and this, is, this is one of the problems we have with blood tests. It's one of the reasons why, A, so many people have a hypothyroid problem or, or they have hypothyroidism, and it doesn't come up on the tests. But they have Epstein-Barr and all the Epstein-Barr symptoms, and they have all the thyroid-related Epstein-Barr symptoms, and it doesn't come up on the test. They got the temperature fluctuations, they got the basic thyroid symptoms, and then they have all the Epstein-Barr symptoms I was talking about, and it doesn't come up, and they're told it's all in their head. Or, you know, go, go somewhere or head to a Lyme doctor and get a, fake diagno- get a false diagnosis of Lyme disease. So because those blood, blood, blood tests don't work either, those are really insufficient too from the best labs. I talked about that in the Lyme, la- the Lyme show all about Lyme labs and blood work. So I talked about that. You should, you should listen to that show again someday if you guys ever, you know, if you've missed it. Maybe this is the first time hearing any of my, my shows. And so you got to check that one out. So what happens is there's an inconsistency with blood testing all on its own, all on its own. And this is a big problem with blood tests and how it works. Um, so let's go into a couple of things that are really important. And um, one is thyroid medication. So I'm sure you guys are curious in this department, thyroid medication. Now, thyroid medication um, isn't prescribed to fix the problem. So it's not prescribed to fix the problem because... No one knows the thyroid is inflamed from Epstein-Barr originally. They just go by the numbers. You know, thyroxine's not being produced, um, is being underproduced. TSH is being overproduced. So then thyroid medication is prescribed. So your TSH comes down. And, um, and so that's the game. But really, it has nothing to do with fixing you or your thyroid. Technically, your thyroid's still hypo or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. It's still hypo or has thyroiditis. That can't change unless someone wakes up someday and says, wait a minute, you got a viral condition to your thyroid. We have to address it. We have to kill off the viral condition. We have to clean it out of the thyroid. We have to recover the thyroid. We have to restore the thyroid. And until that happens, which is not happening anywhere else, it's not happening in other books I've seen, it's not happening in anything else going on, until that happens, then we're going to fix our Hashimoto's, then we're going to fix our thyroiditis, then we're going to fix our uh, hypothyroidism, and then we're going to fix our hypo- hyperthyroidism, which I'm going to talk about in a little while too. This is why I'm speedy, speedy today, <laughs> because um, there's so much to talk about. So... You're given, you're given a medication. The medication, you think you've, you're fixing your thyroid. You walk out of the doctor's office, and your thyroid continues to worsen over the years because no one ever got the Epstein-Barr out. And a lot of people get worse when they take a thyroid medication because it's a steroid. And when it's a steroid, some people react to it, so they can't take a thyroid medication. Steroids tend to make viral conditions worse, so they end up getting more heart palpitations, more symptoms. And then there's a small crew of people that can handle a steroid, an additional steroid. In fact, it actually helps suppress symptoms, too. It suppresses some symptoms in people with Epstein-Barr-related symptoms because it's a steroid. And, you know, and they're not... It's suppressing symptoms, even though the Epstein-Barr could be getting worse, but the symptoms are being suppressed because they're not as sensitive of people. There's some people hypersensitive that can't handle that kind of steroid, and they instantly start reacting. Now, so thyroid medication, I'm not saying you, you, don't, you don't have to take it or whatever. It's a Band-Aid. The, the deal is where you want to go with it all is you want to work on the problem itself, even when you're taking your thyroid medication, so that someday you can talk to your doctor and ask your doctor to help wean you off 
and see where your numbers are again, even though it's difficult to, to even get the right number when your adrenaline's pumping. You know, it's like white coat fever. You go to the doctor and your high blood pressure goes up. I mean, your blood pressure goes up and starts to go high. I know hundreds of people who go to the doctor and, and they all of a sudden look like they have hypertension. They go home and it's gone. That's white coat syndrome. Every, and, that, and that happens when you get the needle in your arm. It's like kind of white coat syndrome. The needle goes in and the adrenaline pumps and it cancels out the blood test so we don't get accurate, full accuracy blood tests. But we have to go by whatever blood we can and whatever blood test we can regardless of some kind of background because we got no other choice. The bottom line is you go to the doctor and you talk about weaning off weaning off and, and um, the medications with your doctor's permission and him, you know, him being supportive and her being supportive if you're working on recovering your thyroid. If you're working on recovering your thyroid, and so when you're doing, you know, taking action, and that's what we're talking about today. So that's an option for you. You can also keep your thyroid medication going and still recover your thyroid and work on your, your thyroid and still do that. That's something, too. But talking to your doctor is always a great thing, no matter what, when it comes down to that. Now, here's the deal. Um, hyperthyroidism. Let's talk about that for a little bit. Hyperthyroidism is Epstein-Barr. There's over 60 varieties of Epstein-Barr. I talk about that in the medical medium book. You guys probably have read it and seen it. Um, but 60 varieties of, of, of Epstein-Barr, some of them are a little bit more aggressive to the thyroid. And they get into the thyroid, and they, because they're a little bit more aggressive, the thyroid produces cells not to attack itself. In fact, far from it. It produces tissue, thyroid tissue, and cells because the, the Epstein-Barr is being so aggressive. See, so it's the Epstein-Barr attacking the thyroid, not the body. And this, what this does is sends the opposite direction going on, and it sends you into the hyperthyroidism place. That piece of information doesn't exist anywhere else but here. Um, once again, I've been saying that, like I said, so that you don't fall in, you know, for something else that's not going to get you better. So for hyperthyroidism, it's still Epstein-Barr related. Now, um, it's one thing to understand, and you can heal hyperthyroidism. And then there's some people who have um, two varieties of Epstein-Barr, three varieties of Epstein-Barr. You can pick them up along the way. You can get them when you're a child. You can get them from your mom and dad. You can have them in your system. You can get them from your first boyfriend, first girlfriend. You can get them in college. You can get them, you know, down the line, and th th we can collect a few. You can get them in a restaurant when, you know, a chef cuts their finger because it happens all the time, and you just, you just get them. And when you have more than one, when you have – you, some people have two, and they'll be both in the thyroid. And one will be creating hypothyroid, one will be creating hyper. That's just how it works. Um, now let's talk about something that's interesting. If you had thyroid cancer, that's a variety of Epstein-Barr that specifically causes thyroid cancer. Uh, Epstein-Barr creates breast cancer. Uh, causes breast cancer. I'm the first one ever to bring that information into the world, and it's finally being researched um, and talked about a little bit. And then, you know, as far as the thyroid goes, thyroid cancer, that's caused by Epstein-Barr as well. Um, you know, we have an epidemic of Epstein-Barr, and I call it an epic-demic because it's really that epic at this point in a bad way. But the bottom line is if you had thyroid cancer and you had your thyroid removed – um, there's, it, there's still a lot of positives with that, a lot of positives. Um, I'm bringing to light for the first time about how positive it is if you did you know, lose your thyroid. It's not a negative thing because you can't get rid of all your thyroid. The best surgeon can't remove your whole thyroid. I was even talking to Dr. Christiane Northrup about this when, um, when you know, I was talking to her recently. And both of us were talking about that because she, you know, she's a, an amazing doctor, one of the best actually out there that I've ever met, ever. And um, and she said, no, you you can't get all of that thyroid removed. Um, it's not possible. And so, so a lot of tissue gets left behind. Could be even one percent. Could be two percent. Could be three percent. That tissue produces thyroxine, and it also tells the body you still have a thyroid, regardless. See? So anyone who has had their thyroid removed understand that you, your body believes you have a thyroid. It does. You should kind of go along with that. 
and tell your body, hey, I do have a thyroid. It's not missing. You believe I don't, meaning to your body. Your body doesn't believe, you know, that's missing. So, so you believe, you know, that the body thinks you have a thyroid. You have to go along with that. It's important because why? Because your body's picking up traces of thyroxin, traces of thyroxin. That's what the body's picking up. And, and it, it knows it knows something. So and same thing if you if you had radioactive iodine and just so you know the radioactive the radioactive iodine treatment that kills off your thyroid wears off after a while and you start getting your thyroid back. Always remember that. And it never kills off the thyroid completely. It's another thing another thing that's so critical, you guys. Critical to know. And you can bring back your thyroid after you know having it killed off from radioactive radioiodine treatments. So you can you can actually have your thyroid come back. Now, iodine, let's talk about that. Iodine kills off viruses. It's an antiseptic, to antibacterial and antiviral. When you were being told not to use iodine when you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis, another incredible mistake. Okay? Now, you don't want to be iodine deficient with Hashimoto's because it can end up into a thyroid cancer case down the road for some people who have the variety that causes it. And you just don't want an iodine deficiency because that allows Epstein-Barr to thrive in the body. Now, you don't want to have to take a lot of iodine. You don't have to at all. If you think you've been iodine deficient, you can talk to your practitioner and take a little bit of iodine. But I, I like also having like just a little bit of seaweed, a little bit of kelp in your diet once in a while, some spirulina, Hawaiian spirulina. Um, dulse is the best one. So dulse, uh, Atlantic sea, uh, Atlantic sea vegetables, and they sell dulse and you get a little dulse in your diet. If you want, you can get a high quality nascent iodine and take one or two tiny drops or three drops, or, you know, you can take even more. If you don't feel like you're reacting at all, you can take a little bit more. If you feel like you're reacting, that's the virus reacting because the virus doesn't like the iodine. It's why they even, you, they don't, <laughs> here's the thing. They found that radioactive iodine kills off the thyroid, but they don't know what's happening. They just, they just think it's killing off the thyroid, but what it's doing is it's knocking down the viral condition. And research and science doesn't know that part yet. They just know that it, something changes with the thyroid when they use radioactive iodine. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend the treatment. There's other ways to actually get rid of your Epstein-Barr and, and head in the right direction. And if you've had it, if you've had the radioactive iodine treatment and you've been told your thyroid's been killed off, it's not killed off, and much of it's alive and functioning, and it, and it recharges, especially if you do all the right things. You take care of yourself, and you eat right and everything, and things start getting better, and we start knocking down the Epstein-Barr virus, and things start getting better, and it really helps. Now, I want to make sure I covered as many topics with this as I can. I covered the thyroid testing. I covered the thyroid symptoms, which are Epstein-Barr symptoms. We co talked about the autoimmune thyroid medication. We covered that. We covered the nodule cyst and tumors. We covered hyperthyroid. Covered the iodine. We covered the missing of thyroid, okay? So I think we're getting there. I really do. I think this is great because we got to talk about a few other things. Um, let's talk about supplements for the thyroid. Zinc is critical. It's the best anti Epstein bar weapon because it stops Epstein bar from proliferating zinc. Zinc. If there's anything you can take away from this, if I went too fast and I was blasting out all this information and you just, you know, you don't have a chance to listen to the show again, just make sure you know your zinc is up to par. And that protects your thyroid. It helps with hyperthyroidism immensely with hyperthyroidism, with Graves' disease. It helps with goiters and Graves' disease and hypothyroidism. Zinc is critical. Good liquid zinc, the one that I, I talk about that's on like my supplements um, page on, on the website and stuff if you're looking for some links to get you to a place. And um, so zinc is good. B12, the one I always talk about, the B12 is critical. Ester C, vitamin C. And you could do the rose hip tea when you take vitamin C. And the rose hip tea ignites vitamin C. It lifts it up. It turns it into something more. That's information out of my life-changing foods book that you guys are going to have in your hands pretty soon. And so that's one thing that helps. It, it, it's, it's incredible. So ester C, larger dosages of ester C. 
You know, see where your sensitivities are at. You could double the dosage from the bottle if you talk to your practitioner and ask them. Practitioners tend to use a lot of vitamin C, and they do different things. So, you know, you can talk to your practitioner, say, I want to take a little bit more vitamin C, and let them figure it out with you. Um, spirulina, Hawaiian spirulina, secret weapon against Hashimoto's thyroiditis, hyperthyroidism, secret weapon against thyroid disorders, hypothyroidism, um, thyroid cancer. It's a great weapon. It just helps with the thyroid in general, so it supports the thyroid in case you're up against something. Cat's claw. Cat's claw. Talk to your practitioner about using it, you know, before you use it. But cat's claw, that's a great one. A, you know, the bark. And so the inner bark, you know, that's a great one there. Cat's claw is incredible for knocking down Epstein-Barr. Helps the thyroid recharge. L-tyrosine, that's an amino acid. L-tyrosine, very helpful. L-lysine, because it knocks down Epstein-Barr. L-tyrosine supports your thyroid. L-lysine kills off the, the virus that's in the thyroid. Ashwagandha. Helpful for the adrenals and for the thyroid, ashwagandha. So, you know, A-S-W-A, you know, ashwagandha. EPA and DHA, non-fish oil-based because mercury is not helpful when it comes down to um, Epstein-Barr. So you don't want to be eating tuna. You can have a little salmon if your heart's in salmon or some halibut or haddock if you're really into fish. But to stay away from tuna. Stay away from shark. I don't know who eats shark, but stay away from shark. Stay away from stored fish. You know, stay away from that kind of thing. Um, but you don't want fish oils in their package state. You know, in fish oil supplements, you don't want those. I saw a commercial the other day. Because you guys know how I feel about fish oil, about how bad it is and why it's bad. It's different than eating a piece of fish. I promise you, it's entirely different. But... Um, I saw a commercial the other day on television where, you know, a, a doctor was recommending some kind of brand of fish oil. And it was just, first of all, it was just bad fish oil. And um, it wasn't even good fish oil. Second of all, uh, it was just terrifying for someone who has Epstein-Barr, someone who has brain problems, someone who has inflammation, someone who has brain fog, someone who has memory loss, someone who has Alzheimer's dementia, just horrendous for, horrendous. Um, so just, you know... Um, hey, look, if your practitioner or your doctor offers you fish oil, make sure it's high quality. It'll be safer. It will be safer. Um, it's, it won't be like as horrendous as the poor quality fish oils that I was just complaining about, but it still will be safer, but it still won't be good with Epstein-Barr. Make sure you do plant-based EPA, DHAs, you know, mega-3s. Um, lemon balm its a secret weapon right there. Licorice root can be helpful for... Um, also, the Epstein Bar helpful for the the Hashimoto's thyroiditis and hypothyro hypothyroidism. <clears throat> okay, and then then we have foods. So hang in there, you guys. Talking quick, <laughs> talking fast, losing my breath because I'm like rapid fire. Um, wild blueberries, amazing anti Epstein Bar food, antiviral food helps rejuvenate the thyroid. Wild blueberries, get the frozen wild blueberries. Celery juice, celery juice, incredible for bringing back the thyroid and Epstein-Barr related problems like a sluggish liver causing poor digestion, intestinal problems, everything. Celery juice is incredible for the thyroid. Asparagus, incredible for the thyroid, really helps clean up the thyroid, helps support it, helps rejuvenate it. Garlic kills off Epstein-Barr and the thyroid. Use a little garlic every day. Radishes. Radishes. I, mean, I have a lot of these foods right here that are in – all these foods are in the Life Changing Foods book, but literally volumes of information in there about how to overcome illness with food. First time ever that's been out there to this degree. Radishes, coconut oil, that's another one. You can do coconut oil. Coconut products are okay, you know, that kind of thing, meaning co dried coconut from a really good source could be okay if you want to play with it. But coconut oil for cooking, coconut butter is good. Coconut butter is, and I'm not talking about suntan lotion <laughs> or hair care products. I'm talking about like coconut butter, which is the oil, but it's got some of the coconut in there too. You can find some good brands that have some good ones. Kale, kale. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about kale and um, and cruciferous, and I want to talk about collard, broccoli, um, cauliflower, broccoli rob, you know, all of those, um, you know, microgreens that are like kale, 
and broccoli sprouts, all these are critical for your thyroid. Um, the fat, fads and trends out there, which I talk about in the books, and I even mention it again in Life Changing Foods, but I go more deeper into it actually. Um, it's a bad trend where there was a mistake made where there's these goitrogen compounds, goitrogenic compounds that disarm the thyroid, make it hypo. This is inaccurate. The same vegetables like kale have an anti goitrogenic compound anti-gorgogenic um, compound that shuts down the gorgogenic compound. That's number one. You couldn't even eat a 100-pound barrel of broccoli, and if you did, it wouldn't hurt the thyroid. So instead, antiseptic, antiviral foods that help knock out Epstein-Barr out of the body and out of the thyroid, that help rejuvenate the thyroid, sulfur are in these vegetables that help restore the thyroid and slow down the Epstein-Barr. Kale can help bring your thyroid back. So this is an example of what's going wrong out there. Example. You know, and it's unbelievable. But this is this is how bad it is. I mean, there's times where I'm doing like a show somewhere or a summit somewhere or whatever, and there's a lot of different speakers in there, like, you know, whatever, just tons of speakers. And someone else will be talking about how it's bad for your thyroid without knowing any information about this. That's how rampant the trends have gone. So protect yourself. Protect yourself. Dulse, incredible for your thyroid. I talked about that. Sprouts and microgreens. Red clover sprouts. Sunflower sprouts. Pea shoots. Amazing for your thyroid. Hemp seeds. The omega-3 in hemp seeds. Butterleaf lettuce. The omega-3s in butter leaf lettuce and hemp seeds help clean up the thyroid and help rejuvenate it. Spinach, lots of spinach. And then there's, once again, fads and trends. Oh, spinach is bad. It's got oxalic acid in it. It's, it's, you know, oxalates, you know, the whole bit. And that's not true. Raw spinach, raw spinach, like raw spinach in a salad actually doesn't do that. It doesn't have that in it. It's when you cook spinach, then that's when it shifts and turns into something you kind of don't want. You can cook other things. You can cook other greens if you want, but you don't want to cook spinach because that changes the structure of the spinach. And, you know, and that oxalic acid could become annoying, but that's only in cooked, and then they have it flipped. Everybody out there has it flipped. They have it when you, you're saying you can't eat raw. That's not true. The raw helps kill the thyroid. It helps bring the body back. It brings the skin back. It builds muscles. It's really high in protein. Spinach is one of these God-given gifts, literally one of these God-given gifts that you can partake in every day. So if you take this list of foods, incorporate it into the diet, and then take out the foods that feed Epstein-Barr and quicken the disease process of of Hashimoto's or any kind of thyroiditis or any kind of thyroid problem or any kind of thyroid disease or thyroid cancer. Take out eggs. Eggs are the worst food on the planet for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The worst. People get sent home from the doctor's office. Okay? They get sent home, told their body's destroying itself. Given a medication that's not fixing the problem, the core of the problem, the root problem. All right? And then told to eat eggs. <laughs> And that's what's happening. Or grass-fed bacon. Okay, so, you know, it's, that's not good for a thyroid fix. Now, you can still eat some animal proteins if you really like high-quality animal proteins, but you can't touch the eggs. You can't touch the pork. You can't touch the dairy products. You can't touch the milk, cheese, and butter. I don't care where the butter was raised. It feeds the epstein Bar. You know, it's not about what I like or don't like or what I'm against or what I'm not against. I have no interest groups that I'm, I'm, I'm affiliated with, okay? And, and same thing with all the supplements and stuff. Um, I have no hands in supplements. I don't, and it's all about just you. It's just you and what's right for you, the best companies, the best products that are there for you to fix your problems, the best foods. I'm not back in one horse or back in another or against another. I'm all for everything, but here's what I'm for mainly is what's going to fix your Hashimoto's. If you don't have Hashimoto's, if you don't have hyperthyroidism, if you didn't have thyroid cancer, if you're not missing a thyroid, if you didn't have all these things going on, if you're not having thyroid symptoms or Epstein-Barr-related thyroid symptoms – 
then I would say, yeah, you can have probably, you know, um, you know, whatever every day or this than that or an animal protein or even an egg. I probably would say you can have an egg if your heart's content once in a while, but I still don't like eggs because they grow PCOS, cysts, tumors, fibroids, breast cancer, uh, which is Epstein-Barr, and eggs just feed and feed everything. So maybe I take that one back. Don't eat an egg. Okay, the bottom line is stay away from also canola oil. Stay away from corn. Corn. Stay away from corn and canola oil when it comes down to Hashimoto's. So here it is, information out there. Stay, here's the information that's misleading that's out there. I'm going to recap it. They say stay away from uh, you know foods like, and this is just some of the foods they're actually putting in the category that are all wrong. They're saying kale, collard greens, cauliflower, broccoli. Wrong, totally wrong, you guys. Okay. Here's another misleading mistake. Stay away from seaweed with the thyroid problem now. That's another one that's developing right there. That alone. Another mistake. Your body's attacking itself when you have Hashimoto's. Incredible mistake. One of the greatest of all time in medical history. I mean, greatest of all time. Okay? And, you know, and there's more. Okay? And then, you know, and young people now, they think they created their own problems all the time. So when a 22-year-old woman, you know, gets told they have Hashimoto's, they, they, get, they, they hear that they probably manifested it. That's not true either. You didn't manifest it. You didn't create it. You know, millennials are being told they're creating all their problems now with their illnesses. It doesn't work like that. I like using manifestation. I like manifesting positive things. I like manifesting the future. I like attracting good things, but it can't be used against you in a way that makes you feel like you got a disease because you manifested or you attracted it. That's a great mistake that's occurring right now in our young people and in our older people, whatever. It's happening both ways. So just be careful there. You're a good person. You didn't cause the problem. And so overall, let's go back a little bit. Your body's not attacking itself. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is caused by Epstein-Barr. If you had your thyroid removed for some reason, like cancer or anything else, um, that's okay. You have t tissue left that you didn't even know producing some thyroxin, so your body believes you have a thyroid. Make sure you're not iodine deficient completely, so make sure you have a little bit of seaweed or some spirulina in there, so you have some iodine, meaning, in, you know, on that level, okay? Look into some of these supplements, all right? I, I list these in places, on, like on my website, so people have an easy access so they're not lost. Think about these foods. Stay away from cultivated blueberries because they really don't offer much. And if you're going to pay that kind of price for a cultivated blueberry, you're wasting your money. Go to the freezer section and get the frozen wild blueberry. It's a medicine. For God's sake, it's a medicine. Most powerful one we have on the planet. Get your celery juice going. Get your asparagus in your diet every day if you can so your thyroid starts to improve. When you go to the doctor's office, realize your adrenaline's running a little bit when you get a, when you get a blood test. So you might want to just relax and realize that your test may not be as accurate as we want them to be, but, but just calm down, calm the adrenaline down, and it can help get a more accurate test. So try to kind of relax a little bit when you can at the doctor's office, knowing that it's okay. It's okay if you get a blood test, and we'll calm the adrenals down so maybe we can try to get a more accurate test. All these things I want you to know and, and consider and understand, and you can heal. You can reverse Hashimoto's. I've seen it done hundreds of times, and it's being done hundreds more and hundreds more just from the information that came from Medical Medium book. So we want to move forward. Check out my new book. Make sure you grab yourself a copy when you can. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. If you're disappointed, I'll probably be heartbroken because I killed myself making sure that thing was packed with getting information from spirit everything I can to get it in there. Check out the medicalmedium.com, look, look for my live events, and know that I stand behind you. I didn't get this gift for me. It wasn't given to me for me. That's not what happened. When I was young, I said to Spirit, is this a gift that's, is, this is for me? And, and Spirit said, no, this gift is for everyone else. And I was heartbroken when I was young, when I was little, heartbroken. And then as I got older, I realize the gift is seeing you heal and get the information you need. I believe in you. I really do care about you and your life and your family's life with everything I have. I love you. Take care. Blessings.